Need some fast, cheap, reliable muck coins? Go to MMOXP.com and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. Welcome back, YouTubers and Madden fans. This is Mad Money Shot, sniffing out the Madden cheese as always. Got a tip video for you today. This is probably the most important tip that you need to master to be a good offensive player in Madden 20, or any Madden for that matter, and it's how to read a defense. Now, this I, this was actually a topic brought up to me by somebody uh, in the comments section, so if you have any ideas for tip videos or something you're having trouble with, let me know in the comments section. I might tackle it, because like I said, somebody, this is something I typically try to do every other year, uh, but somebody reminded me to do it so like I said it's really important your comments your feedback is really important to let me know uh, what you guys want to see other than that like I said this is a video on how to read a defense if you want to see how to read a uh, defense as in regards to running the football how to maximize your run game based off of that let me know in the comment section I can do that uh, next other than that like I said we're gonna go ahead we're gonna we're gonna pick one play and one play only this is a play that essentially used to beat every defense without a problem and it still kind of does but ultimately now you really have to uh, to read the defense to make it work because there are some adjustments that make it work so I'm gonna pick my, my classic verticals play in the Panthers playbook uh, and then like I said we're just gonna figure out what adjustments to make based off of the defense so I'm gonna go defense to defense and show you what to look for so you can essentially pick out uh, what defense your opponent is running because there are tells, there are giveaways no matter how much they want to base the line or uh, try to hide it pre-snap you can always tell what your opponent's in if you look for certain things with the cornerbacks and the safeties. Before I start the video, I just want to let you guys know if you go to MMOXP.com right now, you can get your Mutt Coins ordered and delivered within the next 10 minutes. They're fully loaded on PS4 and Xbox, and they also offer the cheapest coins on the market. So check that out. Link in the description below. Other than that, let's get into the video. So starting off, like I said, this, def this play used to be really good against any defense. They kind of patched it a little bit with the uh, reaction time to the corners. I used to just motion this guy out, and if it was a cover two, the B route would get wide open. I'll show you what I'm talking about. It doesn't do that anymore. You can see how now the safety really closes on that because, like I said, it's a cover two. That's exactly what that defense is. But now it doesn't really work the same way. So if I have to pretty much know what defense I'm looking at, if it's a cover two, I have to streak this RB route, make its tiny adjustment, and that will essentially get the B route open once again because that RB route is going to pull that safety in. So you can see right there. Now that's a simple adjustment to make it work against cover two again. So it really doesn't matter what it is. But if it's a cover three, I just shot myself in the foot because the RB routes are really good cover three concept so that's why reading a defense is paramount when it comes to playing offense on Madden so right off the bat this defense I'm looking at I can tell I'm only looking at two things when it comes to reading coverages you're really looking at two things to start I should say I don't want to there's a pre-snap read and there's a post-snap read so pre-snap read I'm looking at the depth of the cornerbacks that's one of the first things that gives away a play uh, typically the cornerbacks if they're within five yards of the line of scrimmage like they are here that's typically going to be a cover two and that's exactly what this says because I picked it pre-snap so this is a cover two and I know that based off of the depth of the corners I'll show you you know the difference when it comes to cover three doesn't matter whether you base the line or not if you press it might look a little bit different typically people won't press cover three though that's the thing so cover two you know, you can tell based off of the fact that the cornerbacks are down and the safeties are back. That's a dead giveaway for cover for cover two. Cover four, a lot of times you'll see the cornerbacks and the safeties are back. Like I said, I'll get through that as I, as I go through these formations one by one. So knowing that's a cover two, I can make my cover two adjustments. Which typically is, you know, like in this scenario, I would drag the Y route to bring the cornerback down, uh, you know, so that it gets that, that B route open even more. That's essentially the look. So, you know, that's really going to be, um, you, you know, like I said, you have to read how many fumble there, but you have to read the defense. That's essentially, that's going to be key. So another, like I said, the, another characteristic of the cover three is, I mean, sometimes you'll see a, a single high safety. A lot of times your opponent will base a line. It doesn't really matter. Bottom line is if your cornerbacks are playing past five yards, if they're deep like they are here, this is about seven to eight yards depth, you know they're playing off coverage. If, if your opponent is dumb enough to, to basically press, Cover three gets beat really bad if you if you press. So that's one of the reasons you typically won't see that, is your cornerbacks will just get roasted on simple streaks if they if they decide to press in a cover three. 
but ultimately that's going to be your biggest giveaway. The single high safety doesn't necessarily mean cover three. It could also mean cover one, but typically your cover one corners, because it's a man coverage, will play closer down. And I'll show that once again in the future. But basically, since I see that this is essentially a cover three, I know what my read's going to be on this particular play. It's going to be the RB route, which I already mentioned. Um, but, you know, you also have to watch post-snap. You have to watch those safeties. Uh, as you can see right there, that was actually a little bit tighter coverage. I probably should have took the outside route. But you also have to watch the safeties. If if it do, if they do base a line, a lot of times they'll the you know they'll have that one cover three safety will move back. To me, if you if you do that, you kind of take away the benefit of the cover three. One of the benefits of the cover three is the extra box defender, which is really good in stopping the run. So to me, a lot of people might think, well, everybody base the lines in cover three. Okay, fine, but if you do that, you're losing that box defender, which is kind of the point. You know what I mean? Like, you can really stop the run a lot better if your strong safety's down in the box rather than back when you base the line. So a lot of people, I personally do not uh, base the line very much in cover three because I want that extra defender. That's one of the reasons that I like it. It's a really good run defense. Um, but, but other than that, like I said, you can see, even if the, if the cornerback's close, too, like it was there, you can see how the cornerback backs away. When you do a motion, a lot of times the cover three cornerback will back up. And if it's a cover one, a lot of times they'll come down. So that motion can also give away the defense even more because like I said the cover three and the cover one a lot of times looks really similar uh, and a lot of times the formation can really can really clue that in um, but like I said the number one characteristic when it comes to cover three other than the single high safety is the cornerback depth once again once again the cornerback depth has to be that way because if they play closer like I said they're gonna get beat so it's something that you know it's not like a glitch or something that it, it doesn't have a purpose it has a purpose the cornerback depth is what it is because if it doesn't start off that way, if they start closer down like a cover two, they can get roasted by simple streak routes. So they have to start deep. That's the idea. So let's go ahead and let's move on to, let's, like I said, let's compare that to a man coverage real quick. We already saw cover two zone, so this is a cover two man. Now you can see a difference in the depth of the cornerbacks right off the bat. I mean, you can tell that the left cornerback is right in Moore's face which is, you know, it was typically like a five-yard depth. Now he's basically up like he's playing press. And once again, like I said, if you motion this guy out, a lot of times that cornerback will come down to mirror that same press. So I know based off of the depth of the safeties, the way that they're split, I should know right off the bat, this is either a cover two man or a cover one robber which I will also be able to tell when I hike the ball. So if I hike the ball and one of those safeties drops down, and then I get up, you know, I didn't necessarily make the best throw, but if one of those safeties drops down, I'll go to a replay to show you what I'm talking about. Um, but if I hike the ball and one of those safeties drops, then it's a robber concept. It's a cover one robber. So like I said, right here, you can see the safeties. They both go back. That's one of the first things I have to watch every time I hike the ball. Pre-snap, I'm looking at corners. Post-snap, I'm looking at safeties to make sure that that, you know, what they call this is a cover two shell, which basically means that's what you think it is pre-snap. Then you give away the coverage once you hike it based off of what they do, off of their reaction. So when I hike the ball, I know that's a true cover two man. You can tell because also, you know, a lot of times if the defenders chase, it's a dead giveaway. If they just kind of go to a spot and lurk in zones, then you know it's a zone. But if they chase, you know it's you, you know your, your pre-snap read was right. But ultimately, pre-snap, looking at the corners, post-snap, looking at the safeties, and now I know exactly what I have. So now we're in that cover one man, and cover one man will play a little bit different pre-snap than cover two man, because these cornerbacks are on an island. There's only one single high safety, so a lot of times they won't play aggressively down in the receiver's face, and it'll almost look like a cover three. That's why I said cover three and cover one. I personally, when I run my defensive schemes, I mix those two in quite a bit because you can't tell the difference too well. You know what I mean? It's not really easy. The really only giveaway for um, cover one man uh, pre-snap is a lot of times the, the cornerbacks will face uh, one another um, when it comes to um, not I should say that the cor the, uh, the the they'll, they'll typically be right in front of their receiver in a man coverage that won't typically be the way in zone so like I said this is a man coverage and once again I can tell post snap because you see him chasing you know what I mean like that's going to be one of the easier giveaways post snap the second they're chasing you saw the single high safety you know it's going to be a cover one uh, because of the combination of your pre snap read and your post snap read so like I said coming to the line if I can't really tell whether this is cover three or cover one based off of the fact that the cornerbacks are playing off um, it looks like to me like they're aligned over the over the receivers typically which is what they're going to do a little bit more than cover three would um but like i said i don't know 100 percent once i snap the ball and i start seeing i start seeing them you know chasing like they are so i'll just know right off the bat that it's it's cover one rather than cover three so that's pretty much you know all the basic types of defense other than cover four so let's go ahead and let's get to that next 
Now, cover four has a pretty unique look. Um, you can see the spacing is really different between cover four and cover two. The safeties are, are way closer to one another. That's a, that's a dead giveaway. I mean, based off the fact that they're playing off, the cornerbacks are, are past the five-yard depth, so you know it's not a cover two. And then the safeties, obviously, in a cover two because they're splitting the field in half and they're sharing a much larger responsibility, will be a lot further apart than they are pre-snap. So I can tell, based off of the fact that they're so close together, that this is some sort of cover four, whether it's quarters or whether it's cover four drop show two, which is typically what people run more. So I know that. So then I motion out. Uh, another thing about cover four is the safeties typically drop to start the play. So if I think it's cover four, drop show two, I just go ahead and I watch. See how they drop down? They don't actually, um, you know, play back like they typically would. In a cover four quarters, they play more of like a man look. You'll see a more dramatic shift rather than here where they just kind of like stop. You know what I mean? Like that's typically how the cover fours are played. Like right here, they, you can see how the cornerbacks get deeper than the actual safeties from the initial jump. I'll go ahead and I'll show it in a replay, uh, so you can see what I'm talking about a little bit, a little bit better with more control. Uh, but like I said, these, these safeties they start back, but you can see the cornerbacks essentially match them in depth to start the play. They come down because they're typically going to play the run first. That's typically how cover four drop show two works. And you can see how these cornerbacks, they typically play the pass first and they drop back. This one's already in his back pedal uh, because that's essentially, you know, I mean, not in his back pedal. He's already flipped his hips out of his back pedal and he's already covering deep where these safeties are still playing down like it's a run. That's just typically how the cover four uh, drop show two works. So how do you decide whether it's cover four drop show two or cover four quarters is easy. One of the major differences between cover four quarters, once again, is the safety depth. Uh, you can see, once again, the cornerbacks are back. That's typically how any cover four is going to look. But the safeties are playing much wider apart. And they'll essentially, like I said, this kind of plays a little bit like a hybrid between man and zone by the reaction. You'll see, once again, we get a little bit more of a chasing animation. Uh, but you'll see, like a lot of times, people don't really run cover four quarters as much as they run traditional cover four because certain routes can just get forgotten in the coverage. But like I said, if you are pre-snap reading it, you see the same traditional cover four look. All the cornerbacks and safeties are playing deep. But the spacing of the safeties is much wider. So you know that that's not your traditional cover four. That's more of a cover four quarters look. Uh, and that's probably the easiest way to do it. Um, other than that, I mean, there aren't really a lot of other defenses, um, you know, that you really have a hard time reading. If you have like a man zero, that's pretty simple. That's pretty obvious. Um, certain formations can really give away plays too. I'll go ahead and I'll go over that real quick. So I'm just going to go rapid fire here. I pick random defense. Uh, and then I have an offset formation. Uh, where I have three wide receivers to one side, which is really going to help give away formations and coverages. So right here, these cornerbacks are playing down. Uh, I'm going to guess this is either a cover two man based off of their alignment. Uh, and I, I, that's pretty much going to be my guess. So like I said, I'll drag the A route. Sure enough, it was a cover two man. You can see that the uh, safeties, play, both of the safeties dropped back. Everybody followed. So that was a really easy call. Here, this is obviously a cover three because there's no cornerback in front of the B route. So I know this is a cover three, not a cover one. Uh, sure enough, they drop into zones. Like I said, if it was a man coverage, there would be a guy there. So that was a really simple read based off of formation. Um, here we go once again. Coverage, obviously a man coverage. All of the uh, the cornerbacks are, are, are man aligned. They're right in the, in the receiver's faces. Probably a cover two once again. I just got to watch those safety pre-snap. Like I said, we get a cover one robber. Uh, which you know, like I said, you got to watch those safeties. I mean, it looked like a man, it looked like a cover two, but one of the safeties drops down. So I know post snap, I'm looking at a cover one robber concept. Here we go once again. This is obviously this could be a, a zero blitz. I'm basing that off of you know, the, it looks like it could be a cover three, but since that one safety in the middle isn't in the middle of the field, I'm pretty sure this is going to be a cover zero. So I should see a blitz here. Sure enough, everybody's coming. Um, I get a double coverage, though, with some sort of, you know, this guy dropped back onto the safety. But, you know, a lot of times you can tell based off of there being no safety. It didn't really appear that there was any safeties at all. So here we go. Once again, we get the shift. We got the cover three. I can make my adjustment. Um, that was actually a little bit of an early throw. I thought you'd get a little bit more of a break off the line, but it was a cover three. So here we go once again. Uh, cornerback depth, about five yards off. Safety split pretty wide. Looking like we have a cover two. Um, this should not be too hard to pick up. Um, you know, like I said, once again, it's, it's obviously a zone. They all drop back, and then, like I said, we have a we have a cover two look. So really easy, based off of the principles of reading the cornerbacks' depth, reading the safeties' depth, 
And like I said, the formation can really help when it comes to reading man coverage. Um, once again, this looks like another cover too. I'm not going to keep doing it though. Like I said, you guys see exactly what I'm talking about. Hopefully, you'll do a better job when you come to the line of scrimmage. Um, you should be able to read your opponent's defense like a book pre-snap. It should be pretty easy now. So that's it. That's the video. If you guys want to see more videos like this, more tip videos, do me a favor to like button. I'll do that next. Other than that, thanks for watching, man. Money shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like eBooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my bids and more. Link in the description below.